manager of Tally Farms Fresh Harvest. And today we're going to talk about pre-cooling your vegetables. When produce is harvested in the fields, it's hot. Hot from the sun and from just growing naturally. Many produce items are boxed and palletized right in the fields. So, if we want that produce to last a long time, we need to pre-cool the produce that is in those boxes. That means we need to cool the vegetables that are in the middle of a box that is in the middle of a pallet. If we just put a pallet of produce in a cold room, only the outside of the boxes that are on the outside of the pallet would get cold, not the produce in the middle of the pallet. There are four main types of pre-cooling and different produce items like to be pre-cooled in different ways. Forced air cooling is where cold air is forced through those big holes in the wall. We line up the pallets on either side of those holes. Then we cover the top and back of the pallets. Finally, we turn the blower on. Wow! Cold air is circulated and it cools the vegetables down. Napa cabbage is very dense and it takes four to five hours to force air cool. A second way to pre-cool vegetables like cilantro, lettuce, and corn is to hydro-cool them. This is where ice cold water flows and recirculates through the boxes and pallets of vegetables. It also washes out extra dirt and soil on root vegetables like carrots, radishes, and beets while making their tops crisp and cold. Vacuum cooling creates a vacuum inside a vacuum tube and sucks out all the heat. Vegetables that like to be vacuum cooled include Chinese Napa cabbage, spinach, iceberg lettuce, and cauliflower. It only takes Napa cabbage about 45 minutes to cool down when we vacuum cool it versus the four to five hours when we force air cool it. Vacuum cooling is a lot more energy efficient than forced air cooling. Many produce items like broccoli, kale, and green onions like to be iced. Here at the Pismo Oceano Vegetable Exchange, pallets of broccoli are put into an ice machine. ice shoots through the holes in the boxes and solidifies around the broccoli, cooling it down. So now you've learned one of the many ways science and engineering are involved in farming. 
Maybe you would like to be a farmer someday. There are all sorts of jobs in agriculture, from water management, mechanics, engineering, sales, crop science, tractor driving, warehousing, and communications. Think about it. 